माननीय फॉर इन थ्रू की ये परिकल्पना बहुत जल्द साकार होगी ऐसा हम सबका विश्वास लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द की नोट एड्रेस ऑफ दिस मच अवेटेड सबमिट आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट फाउंडर एंड सीई ओ ऑफ जोहो कॉरपोरेशन श्री श्रीधर वेम्बू सर टू काइंडली शेयर योर रिमार्क्स विद अस सर प्लीज वेलकम आप सबकी करतल ध्वनि उनके स्वागत में नंदरी वनकम नमस्कार I'm sorry I have to speak in Hindi only two languages I know are Tamil and English I'm actually learning Hindi but still not ready to speak it yet maybe in another two years so I want to start with uh, something that few people don't know I actually went to a Tamil medium school all the way till my high school and only after I went to IIT I switched to English medium IIT Madras and uh, in my time i'm talking about uh, i went to iit in 1985 so that is when i was 17 it was quite common in places like chennai for middle class students even to go to tamil medium school i think it was common throughout india at that time the tamil medium is not something only the poorest kids go to as it is today but in that time you will find a mix of students both the middle class students and poor students in tamil medium schools and uh, for those of you who didn't know tamil itself has a very interesting character that's something that i want to explain here because it's actually related to sanskrit language and it is related to technology as well tamil actually is two distinct languages by now in fact there is research in university of pennsylvania that talks about something called literary tamil lt they call it that research and then spoken tamil st and so every tamil medium student effectively learns two languages the spoken version which is a colloquial version and the literary version which is really uh, difficult grammar actually it's quite uh, hard and uh, in fact uh, so much so that one of the reasons why you know in the tamil nadu you take tamil as a language you will not score very well because it is a very complex grammar it is a difficult language the spoke the literary tamil and you have to learn both to pass anything you write spoken tamil in an exam you'll get fail you'll get zero actually that's not how you use the language in a literary way this particular thing this uh, separation between the literary form and the spoken form this has a word the linguists have a word called diglossia and apparently tamil is one of the most diglossic languages in the world only there's only two or three languages that have had that much divergence divergence between a literary form and a spoken form so the diglossia is most common in tamil and uh, among all the indian languages tamil is probably the most diglossic and the way to understand it for those of you in hindi or other languages it is as though you have to write your exams in uh, sanskrit but you speak hindi that is the way you should envision it in other words you are speaking hindi at home but your exams will be in sanskrit and all your textbooks will be in sanskrit you will not actually learn all those subjects in tamil itself in the in the way you speak that should give you a mental idea of what is the difficulty here there was also the reason why in tamil nadu it is a, the three language formula is difficult because we already have three languages in a way we already have the the literary tamil and the spoken tamil that every student has to learn to to be to achieve a mastery in tamil which is also why if you learn tamil only through textbook and you arrive in chennai you will not be able to make any any headway there you have to learn a spoken tamil that separate and the, and the way that uh, the newspaper reads is very different and then the way the literary text read is even more difficult so that's the range of tamil but there is actually a i later once i got into software industry i noted some pattern people like me who came from a very strong tamil medium background were doing extremely well in software even though they were not actually good in english there's something you would notice uh, throughout now whenever you are run a software company in chennai or in bangalore for that matter 
because at that time a lot of the talent pool was coming from people with this background people who learnt in tamil and they would come to you know there was a period where software industry was primarily supplied by this of course later it expanded massively to this day in fact one of the reasons i have a center development center in rural tenkasi district tenkasi is actually dakshin kashi ten in tamil is south so literally the dakshin kashi that it tells you the unity of our nation that uh, tenkasi itself is 670 kilometers from chennai southwest of chennai it's very close to the southern tip only about 80 90 kilometers i am in kanyakumari and yet the district name is tenkasi and we have a beautiful temple uh, vishwanath mandir there in tenkasi and uh, why i chose this region is that this is actually the classical the the tamil grammar was born in this region the grammar was uh, written by uh, saint agastya and he is from this region tenkasi region the hills nearby where my home is now the hills are called agastya hills and agastya is considered the father of the tamil grammar the same role in uh, like played by panini in sanskrit that is saint agastya and uh, the grammar is very strict and i think now i have started learning a little bit of sanskrit on the on the side along with hindi because i want to understand the roots and i can see how the tamil grammar and the sanskrit grammar have a connection there deep so you were emphasis on precision avoidance of ambiguity in spoken language we can afford to be very ambiguous but in written formal communication we want to avoid all ambiguity which is the goal of all this grammar all of grammar is it turns out that is exactly the goal of software when you instruct a computer you have to be very precise on what you want as a programmer so our honorable minister uh, mentioned about the programming the profession coders and there you are your primary goal is to avoid any ambiguity and speak precisely and i am actually developing a computer language of my own right now in fact my uh, part of the reason why i got into languages is i am actually developing a computer language a programming language so i got into a lot of the study of grammar and structure precision avoidance of ambiguity which is why i started appreciating the linguistics in tamil and then i am also now getting into the sanskrit and all of that i also noticed how the spoken languages diverge from the literary forms this diglossia i talked about and this so there was a period i mentioned as in the uh, 70s to 80s lot of even the middle class children going to tamil medium schools was not uncommon i wouldn't say extremely common but not uncommon but today you come to even rural areas like where i live in only the really only the poor kids go to tamil medium schools anymore anybody with any money at all they will go to an english medium school that is what has happened i think this is true throughout india now i don't think it's just a confined to tamil nadu now and sure enough i'm also finding another interesting pattern these children are no longer interested in software the ones who are studying in the english medium schools are not that interested in software anymore and it's not because it doesn't pay well it pays well i noticed it in cities i noticed it in chennai where lot of the next generation cohort even our own employees children have noticed they don't express interest in software anymore they've lost that grounding in the uh, the, the rigorous grammar and uh, so they are not interested the the childhood pattern of learning and i will give you another story in my 10th standard as a tamil medium student the hardest subject for me was actually tamil all of the other subjects i did extremely well only in tamil i actually did moderately well the hardest subject was tamil and uh, that was helpful because you struggle with it the grammar all of those patterns even doing moderately well later prepares you for i didn't know at that time in 1983 for software and uh, i was particularly fond of grammar in tamil i am not a very literary person i am not a poet but i was interested in the structure grammar how do you form sentences all of that it turns out that is what prepared me for software in the end and it was just i just lucked 
I was lucky to go to a Tamil medium school because I was exposed to all that very strict grammar there. We can actually enable all of our students to be lucky. We have to teach them uh, the rigorous Samskrita that has to be mandatory throughout our nation. Particularly all I mentioned, how Hindi speaking students have to learn Samskrita to learn that rigorous grammar because that's what prepares you for precision of thought. And precision of thought is what is absolutely needed in technology. Whether you design a semiconductor chip or you send a rocket to the moon, you need to be very precise in how you instruct the computer because the computer is doing all the work. And any lack of precision is, a, is an error. So that precision of uh, thought, that is what I, my own obsession in my language development, computer language development, is how to avoid all error, bugs, we call it, software, right? How to avoid bugs. And we have made some uh, interesting breakthroughs in it. There are mathematical connections, how to avoid bugs, all that. But ultimately, it comes down to structure and exploiting that structure in your language. And that's what I have, I've been spending a of, lot of my professional time the last seven, eight years have been in computer language development. Now, we are very close to some breakthroughs now, which we'll announce in due course. But really, the, the, the grounding for it came from my own uh, uh, struggle, actually, I should say, in school with understanding the full literary Tamil. And it was not easy then. Even today, I would say, as a uh, well-educated Tamil person, I am not very well versed in all of the classical literature. There is a vast amount of it. <coughs> and there is vast amount of poetic, poetry, grammar of poetry there. Tirukural, that is well famous, but there is so much of it. Just in the couplet, how much meaning is expressed. And that actually has a direct connection to software because uh, my goal with our software language is to express it so uh, precisely that you never have to repeat yourself. You tell the computer exactly once and it gets it. That's the goal of my language development. And that is coming from these couplets like Tirukura. So there is a direct connection between our linguistic roots, our linguistic heritage, our grammar, our structure, that our saints have thought through, our rishis have thought through. And these two languages represent two poles of Indian thought in this. Of course, Samskrita is one and Tamil is the other. And they are connected deeply. Those roots have to be now taught to all our children. Because it is those roots that enable us now to compete globally. And yet, I'll tell you the sorry state today, even in remote areas, even in a village like mine, the most parents will say, start an English medium school. And if Tamil is learnt at all, it's an afterthought. In my own village, our own children, I have to struggle to tell them, you have to learn to write, without, write Tamil without error. First, the first job is to make sure that you write Tamil without error. Before English, before all of that, learn to write Tamil without error. So those are some of the challenges now. And where does it come from? Obviously, it's economics. The pressure is fully economic because the assumption now throughout India, and, and it's also, I see this in South, that our languages are not, are not going to give you uh, economic development. Our languages not, are not going to give you prosperity because we see prosperous people only speaking English. That's true anywhere, right? Prosperity means English now. That is the association that has gotten deep-rooted. So one reason I have the company in Tenkasi is we have about 1,000 engineers now. Almost entirely most of us speak Tamil locally in the company. And uh, more and more that is the sort of the operating language locally. And part of the reason is I want to elevate the status of that that you can earn well speaking Tamil. If we don't solve that economics problem, if we don't solve that status problem, if we don't solve that prestige problem, we cannot revive our language. It's fundamentally an economics problem too. That our parents have to believe that there is a future in teaching their children Tamil or Samskrita or any of our languages. They have to believe that. Today, our poor, even our poor parents don't believe this. They'll say, well, you'll conduct a seminar, you'll talk, but your children will only be learning English, right? That's what they'll say. 
So we have to, this is the challenge we have to uh, surmount and that is why I have put the company there and also our school there. Our school starts with a very strong grounding in Tamil. We also teach English, we teach Hindi as well. And we are teaching Sanskrit now. So all of these languages are taught. We focus on languages in our school. So you'll come to this uh, village deep south where absolutely nobody will speak Hindi. But you come to our school, some children will now speak, start to understand now. So it's an amazing sight. When you teach at a young age, they pick it up very fast. So we are doing this now. But we, and part of my mission also is to ensure that they are self-confident. In fact, our school has, uh, in Tamil we call it Tannambike. Tannambike is self-confidence. And Tannarvam is self-drive. And uh, Tannurikam is self-discipline. Those are the three uh, pillars we call our school. Self-confidence, self-drive, and self-discipline. And then we, uh, we use the word in Tamil for Dharma, Aram. Aram is the word that's from Tirukural itself. Aram is what is the Tamil word for Dharma. So all of this founded on Aram, Dharma in Tamil. So that's the whole motto of the school. And our goal is to endow our students with a very strong grounding in our languages, along with it a very critical technology backing. So while they learn Tamil, we also have a workshop where they learn motorcycle maintenance, to computer development, all of that, software development, all of that. We want them to know all the technologies in our households. So they'll take apart a fridge and know what is a compressor, what is this, what is that, all of that. And same with scooters and motorcycles. So much so that now our students, our older students, 15, 16 year olds, with, along with the instructor, have become so proficient, we fix all the motorcycles and the scooters in our village now, in our garage now, in the school. The villagers bring it to the school now because then the students know how to fix them. And that is the technology we have imparted. And I tell them along with it, now you want to learn more mathematics, you have to learn more science in order to figure out the principles how the motorcycle works. If you don't learn mathematics or technology or science, you will not know how the motorcycle works. You will only be able to fix it. So that is the motivation. That's why the technology I'm creating interest by, for example, why you should learn computer science because if you want to understand why the software works, what is Bay and all that, you have to learn some computer science. If you want to know how the motorcycle works, you have to learn some mechanical engineering, which then goes back to physics, which then goes back to mathematics. So that is how we are creating the interest in these rural students. Simply saying, take this physics class will not motivate them. But doing this, learning by doing, does motivate them. And then we are also now investing to create, what is the next step? What do they do after school? So we're creating some workshops now, a manufacturing facility is coming up, a manufacturing R&D center is coming up. So I'm looking at this, in other words, our language development, our language revival, has to go hand in hand with our rural economic revival, our self-confidence in ourselves, ultimately, our self-respect as a nation. That is the most critical thing of all, because a lot of what our middle classes do is a profound lack of self-respect for our own culture. That is why where we are, we are even talking about the subject here. Only if you have that self-confidence and the self-respect, we can do all these things. And that's why I went there, and that is why we have now all these projects are in a, uh, you know, in a good takeoff state. They're doing quite well. We have about a thousand employees in our company there. We have created three more rural centers. We are actually scouting for a location in UP. I am going to come bring this to North, and that's why I want to also want to learn Hindi because I want to be in UP, in one rural district. I'm not going to be in Noida. I'm going to be in some rural UP. So I want to invite our uh, honourable minister to come to Tenkasi and. Uh, visit us and see all this for himself and uh, where this is our goal. So the language development and the economic development and our ultimately gaining our self-respect as a nation, all of this goes together for me. And our technology, self-sufficiency, Atman Urban and all of the technologies, including AI, all of this we have to do. So that's all I have to say and thank you for listening. Danyavad, Namaskaram. <laughs>